Now, conjoint analysis is of uh, various types, various forms of conjoint analysis, right? So, uh, let us quickly uh, look at, uh, uh, let us quickly uh, look at uh, various types of conjoint analysis. Now, uh, okay, uh, choice based, okay. Choice based con conjoint analysis, uh, it is the most commonly used uh, form of conjoint analysis where uh, uh, the consumer is offered a, uh, 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 a set of four options, let us say three or four options and the consumer tells us out of this uh, set of three or four options that are you are that you are pro providing me, uh, I prefer this the most, the most preferred full profile product. Full profile meaning I am not offering attribute by attribute uh, uh, comparisons, right. I will not say, oh, there are four uh, 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 four uh, uh, engine uh, values, uh, uh, 800 cc, 1000 cc, 1200 cc, 2000 cc, right? I, I, I'm not, I'm not giving you that. I'm giving you the full car. I will give you the attribute values probably. Uh, I will give you these are the five attributes and these are the values for each of the cars. Uh, uh, and in this set, uh, let us say I have three or four cars and I will ask you which car do you prefer the most? So what I'm asking you is, I am going to ask you for your <coughs> preferences on a full profile product, not not uh, decomposed products, right? Not uh, decomposed at their attribute level. I will give you attribute data. So this kind of analysis is called choice based conjoint analysis. Now there is something called adaptive conjoint analysis. Uh, the problem with choice based analysis is uh, it's a fixed set of questions that we keep on asking the consumers. And uh, depending on how many products we wish to uh, offer to the consumer, how many choices do we wish to offer to the consumer, the number of questions may get too many. Uh, adaptive, uh, adaptive conjoint analysis, on the other hand, uh, is, is, is uh, as, as it says, it is adaptive. So essentially, if, uh, uh, it, it varies the choices uh, uh, set pro provided to the consumer depending on what kind of preferences they are giving us, right? So in, in set one, let us say in set one, they have given us a particular preference. Uh, I may construct the set two uh, based on the preference given by the consumer in set one, right? Uh, so uh, I, I adopt my questions in such a way that I can get all the information from the consumer probably in uh, less time or uh, less, less number of questions, right? Uh, so uh, uh, essentially uh, that helps me uh, get the responses from the consumer faster before the consumer gets uh, uh, cognitively tired, right? Uh, the third type of uh, consumer analysis is the full profile consumer analysis, right? The full profile consumer analysis, uh, something that we saw a couple of slides ago. Uh, the full suit of options is presented. Uh, uh, the consumer uh, is present uh, is comparing four variants of the product. I will off, I will give them the uh, I will give them the data for all the four options, right? Uh, I will give the data for all the four options. Uh, against the choice based model where I construct smaller sets, right? I construct, uh, uh, let us say a set of three products and then the set of uh, two products more and then the set of three products. Out of that, which prof which product do you prefer most? Out of this, do you, which product do you prefer most? That is not in, done, that is not done in the full profile conjoint analysis. Full profile conjoint analysis is similar to what we had a couple of slides ago where we had uh, given the full data to the consumer on two attributes and ask the consumers to, uh, to give us the preferences, right? Uh, and the last uh, 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 type of consumer analysis, there are many more, but uh, these are the most commonly used. The last type of consumer analysis that we can quickly describe is called menu-based conjoint analysis. In menu-based conjoint analysis, uh, uh, what we do is, uh, uh, we, we, uh, we actually ask the consumer to build the product. We ask the consumer to build the product by giving them a list of attributes and their associated prices. And then the consumer is asked to pick uh, on attribute one, what, what value do you prefer for attribute one? For example, uh, engine size, what engine size do you prefer, right? Uh, uh, do you prefer uh, leather seats? Yes, no, right? Uh, so for each attribute, uh, I, I want to, uh, 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 the consumer then gives me choices, right? Uh, uh, so consumer uh, uh, for each, uh, uh, attribute, uh, consumer uh, chooses what they want in their ideal product, in their ideal product, keeping prices in mind, right? Keeping prices in mind. Uh, so as I said, one of the objectives of conjoint analysis is actually to build the value system for the consumer, what the consumer is thinking. Now, for example, uh, uh, let us say that, uh, uh, let us say that uh, uh, in the car example, let us, let us construct a car example. Let us say that uh, uh, 
uh, uh, you you said uh, attribute uh, okay uh, leather seats uh, you say leather seats right uh, so let's say uh, leather seat is uh, going to cost the consumer hundred dollars uh, and uh, let us pick a different attribute uh, let us say that uh, uh, the AC vents uh, on the passenger side uh, AC vents on the passenger side is also a feature and let us say that uh, that is also going to cost the consumer hundred dollars now uh, if the consumer prefers leather seats uh, if the consumer prefers to go for a leather seat which is going to cost them hundred dollars instead of going for AC vents that is going to give, cost them hundred dollars we definitely know that uh, seat quality is more important to the consumer uh, rather than the air quality in the car right so that is that is that is the way to understand what is the value system for the consumer so menu based conjoint analysis offers the choice of uh, offers uh, uh, the option for the consumer to actually build the product on their own right so these are the various types of conjoint analysis uh, in in uh, in this discussion uh, uh, the the mathematical models that we are going to look at are more focused on the full profile conjoint analysis are more focused on the full profile conjoint analysis but i just wanted to highlight that there are various types of various forms of conjoint analysis and all of them are quite popular quite popular in fact there are more than these four types that we have put up on the slide uh, we have described these four because they are more commonly used but uh, depending on what is the objective of the market researcher what what goals do they have uh, from this conjoint analysis they may prefer uh, one particular form of conjoint analysis over the other form of conjoint analysis uh, in addition to that let me also tell you that there are various commercially available software packages that can help you uh, conduct conjoint, anal conjoint analysis on a set of consumers so depending on what form of conjoint analysis do you uh, 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 do you want to go with uh, it will it will actually construct or it will help you construct the questions that you wish to ask to the consumer and actually walk you through the process perform all the statistical analysis perform all the mathematical analysis and actually give you uh, the output in a form that is most useful to you so uh, the point that is being made is there are commercially available software packages that can help you conduct conjoint analysis we are going to see two such uh, methods but they are uh, we are actually going to walk them through. we are you are not going to get automatic answers you have to build the model run the model and then get the results which these commercially available packages are going to give you readily all right uh, let us let us move on uh, let us talk about applications of conjoint analysis how how a market researcher can use conjoint analysis Conjoint analysis finds uh, applications uh, in many ways. Uh, uh, market researcher can use it in many ways. For example, uh, in in marketing, right, uh, 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 or advertising or communicating, right. Uh, once you understand that some of the features or some of the attributes are more important, as we discussed uh, in the previous slide, if you somehow find out that uh, uh, the seat quality is more important than the air vents on the back side, right. Uh, if that is more important. Then uh, once you build the communication channels uh, with the consumer, you can highlight, right? You can highlight that these are the attributes that I will give you because I know that these attributes are important for you. Once I know that these are the attributes that are most preferred by the consumers, then uh, uh, all these attributes can get highlighted in all the communication that I can have with the with the uh, with the consumer. For example, my advertising uh, will highlight the fact that. Uh, uh, this car is a very powerful car if i know that you like powerful cars uh, in all my promotions uh, right uh, when i offer uh, sales promotions for example uh, i will offer sales promotions uh, based on the attribute uh, values that i know uh, the consumers like right uh, so uh, 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 that way uh, conjoint analysis can help us in marketing right uh, uh, more importantly, uh, once I know that these are the set of consumers that like this attribute, these are the set of consumers that like this attribute, then I can uh, very, uh, very uh, organically, very organically, I can help, I can actually get market segmented, right? And then offer uh, various uh, choices, various prices, various options to each segment, uh, uh, depending on what are the preferences of uh, the consumers in that particular segment. Uh, so that uh, that way conjoint analysis can help me in marketing conjoint analysis can also help me in r and d right product development now uh, if i had performed a conjoint analysis before i started my product development i would know uh, which attributes are more important uh, to the consumer what are the levels uh, uh, that are most preferred by the consumers 
once i do that then in my product development i can work on refining these attributes that have been found to be important for the consumers right uh, and and hopefully build a product uh, that that the consumer would like right uh, so essentially uh, uh, in my product development uh, i can i can uh, spend my time only on the attributes that are important so i can neglect if if i know that if i know that consumers don't care about the uh, uh, the color of the car i i need not spend time or i need not spend my resources on deciding what should be the optimal color of the car right so uh, yeah and uh, once i narrow down these are the uh, these are the attributes then all my uh, r and d focus can be only on these set of attributes uh, that have been identified by conjoint analysis so that way conjoint analysis helps me in product development uh, conjoint analysis helps me in pricing right uh, obviously very clearly you can see that uh, because uh, conjoint analysis gives me the most preferred products uh, most preferred attributes now uh, the pricing uh, the pricing can be decided uh, based on uh, whether the product uh, contains a uh, high level of the attribute that is preferred for example for motorbikes uh, if if uh, uh, consumer is buying a motorbike and uh, she tells you that she she likes high powered engine uh, then obviously the motorbike with higher horsepower can be sold at a premium right so that that way it can help me price the product because now i have identified the important attributes and i can play with the pricing based on the levels of the attribute that are present in that particular model more importantly uh, this is a more uh, overt application uh, uh, implicitly the biggest advantage of conjoint analysis is uh, conjoint analysis at least indirectly helps me identify the willingness to pay right uh, it can reveal consumers willingness to pay for a particular attribute uh, obviously if the attribute is important uh, for, for the consumer the consumer will be more uh, uh, consumer will be willing to pay more uh, money to get that attribute to get that attribute right uh, so uh, conjoint analysis helps us in identifying the wtp willingness to pay function for the consumer and now that is its uh, very important uh, contribution to pricing so what is the process that we are going to follow the process that we are going to follow are uh, we are going to define products as a combination of attributes uh, we saw a couple of slides ago right uh, uh, we can have two attributes three attributes four attributes right so uh, products uh, are going to be defined uh, only as collection of attributes and having uh, the consumers react to uh, these alternatives uh, right these alternative uh, offerings uh, each alternative offering is a collection of attribute uh, and we know quantitatively uh, what are the levels of attributes that we are offering now uh, uh, one can uh, uh, look at uh, each attributes uh, uh, importance right how how is each attribute importance so the uh, optimal weight uh, identified by the consumer for this particular attribute and secondly what is the most desired level of each uh, uh, each each attribute right what is the most desired level for each attribute for the customer so that is what we are going to do as i said uh, 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 we are going to look at two mathematical models uh, in conjoint analysis one is based on an optimization technique and the other one is based on a statistical technique both essentially try to do the same thing right so we will end the session here and get into the mathematical aspects of conjoint analysis in the next session Thank you.